The Maldives, the land of crystal blue waters, pristine white beaches, paradise exactly as you would imagine it. Now, so many of us want to visit this place, but so many of us are held back by the prohibitive cash costs. So today we're going to be looking at a full guide here of how to travel to the Maldives, the best hotels to stay at, the best ways to fly there, how much you're going to be spending on food, activities, and transfers. And you can see here, there's a picture of me in the Maldives I visited in January, so just a couple months ago actually. I went to Six Senses Lamu, best experience of my life, best place I've ever been to in the world, 100% recommend going to the Maldives. The first part we need to look at are hotels. So for most destinations around the world, it's not just about the hotels, right? It's about the city you're exploring, you know, the food, like the other things you're gonna do. But the Maldives is different. The hotel is everything. The whole experience that you have when you go to the Maldives, you're just gonna be on a private island staying in your hotel. So the most important thing you need to decide when wanting to go to the Maldives is your hotel. It's not anything else, pretty much. So just a little bit of background on the Maldives. So the Maldives is an island nation a few hundred miles uh, off the south coast of India, and there are a lot of different hotels to choose from. The weather is really, really good when you go kind of during uh, what is our winter season. So when you go from, let's say, November to about April, that's going to be your peak season, peak dry season. You can go in the summer too, but that's monsoon season. So if you go in the summer, you can have good weather, but you can also have very bad weather. Now, when you get bad weather, it may not last that long. It may just last a couple hours, but you need to be aware of that because, you know, don't go in the summer expecting to get pristinely perfect weather. You will find, however, much, much cheaper rates. So this is an example of what a hotel in the Maldives might look like. This is probably arguably the best hotel in the Maldives. This is the world famous Soneva Yanni. So you may have seen people online go to this resort. So notably like Kara and Nate, the YouTube channel, Qatar Airways actually filmed part of their safety video at Soneva Yanni. So take a look at that and you'll notice it next time you fly Qatar Airways. Now, unfortunately, this is not a hotel we'll be able to stay at using points or for any discounted rate. This hotel, if you want to stay at it, you either need to be a very popular influencer or very, very wealthy. But that's an example of, you know, some of the peak aspirational destination like resorts that you'll see in the Maldives. So first thing we got to do is pick our hotel. Now, the good news is there's a lot of options. There's a ton of options. So one might be the Park Hyatt Maldives, but it's a thousand dollars a night. One might be the Alila Maldives, it's a thousand dollars a night. One might be the Ritz Carlton Maldives, it's two thousand a night. So I think you see what kind of pattern I'm developing here. Now, but again, there's an insane amount of options, like an absurd number of options. Six Senses Maldives. This is a place that I went to and absolutely loved it. Thirteen hundred a night. Conrad Maldives, a thousand a night. And also with the Conrad Maldives, by the way, you'll notice the picture I used is of an underwater restaurant because yes, they have an underwater restaurant on the property. It's one of the world's only underwater restaurants. And a lot of the pictures you'll see online, kind of like of those memes going around, like, you know, talking about like, you'll see like top 10 destinations or whatever, and you'll see a underwater restaurant. It's from this hotel. There are others too, but this is kind of the main one. And arguably the best points bookable hotel on earth, Waldorf Astoria Maldives, and which goes for $2,200 a night. Now, you may have noticed a pattern here that it is very expensive to stay at any hotel in the Maldives. Are there cheaper options? Yes. Do we want to stay in any of those cheaper options? No. If I'm going to travel all the way around the earth, I want to stay in a very nice hotel. We're not going to get a second rate experience. Now you might be saying, cool, Sean, that's it. wonderful and all, but I don't have a thousand dollars a night to spend. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably know where I'm gonna go with this. Points, baby, right? We're gonna be using points here, of course. So for the Park Hyatt Maldives, which we looked at was a thousand dollars a night, we can book it for 30,000 World of Hyatt points per night. Same thing with the Alila Maldives, which is brand new, by the way. They just opened it last year. Only 30,000 Hyatt points per night. The Conrad Maldives is 120,000 Hilton points per night, only 96,000 after fifth night free. And remember that Hilton points are significantly less valuable than Hyatt points. So, you know, even though it's more, it doesn't actually necessarily cost way more than these other hotels. And so these are very, very good options here. And we're going to be looking at these hotels mainly because, and we'll get to why in a second, but First of all, these are wonderful hotels. These are not second tier hotels. These are world-class destinations and you will have a phenomenal experience at any one of these. I promise you. So, you know, okay, I showed you these hotels. They're fairly cheap on points and we'll talk about, you know, the best way to earn these points in a second. But a lot of times when you'll see these blogs and you'll see these articles or presentations on, 
best hotels to stay at using points or how to stay here discounted. You know, it will be something where you can never actually book the hotel. So there'll be, you know, these amazing hotels, you can't actually book them, there's no availability. Not in this case, there's plenty of availability here. So this is taken from maxmypoint.com, a wonderful resource. If you're watching the recording, there'll be a link in the description. So for example, the Park Hyam Aldi is 98% points availability, meaning 98% of this year's calendar, you can book on points. The Alila Maldives is, oh, only a measly 93%. It's still amazingly super, super wide open. The Conrad Maldives is at 60%, which is still very, very good. To take an example of a calendar, so on the right here, you'll see the calendar view for the Conrad Maldives in November, which keep in mind is your start of the dry season here. Wide open, full wide open availability, all on points. So you can easily book as long of a stay as you would need to do at any three of these hotels. So if you have the points, the availability is super easy to come by on these. So the availability is easy to come by. They're great hotels. They're very expensive. How do we get these points? So some, you know, for the experts here, you probably already know, but we'll just cover very quickly on some of the, the two main strategies if you wanted to visit the Maldives as fast as possible or to acquire the points as fast as possible. What are your strategies? So first we have the no cash strategy. Ink, 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 baby. Get some Chase Ink cards. Chase Ink cards are the Chase Ink, you know, business cards. They're business credit cards. Basically, everyone qualifies for a business card. You have some business of some sort, probably. You sell something on eBay, you tutor people. That's a legitimate business, and you can apply as a sole proprietor. Per card sign up, you'll be earning 75,000 Chase points for every single welcome offer on every single one of these cards if you spend $6,000 within three months. These are the current offers at time of recording. Now, for these offers, remember that Chase points transfer to Hyatt at a rate of one to one. So 75,000 Chase points is 75,000 Hyatt points, meaning a single ink card, which is a no annual fee credit card, earns you more than two nights at the Park Hyatt Maldives. It's 2.5 nights. That's amazing. So if you get a couple ink cards and if you're, you know, player two, if your significant other gets a couple as well, you're already looking at a very significant trip to the Maldives. And just keep in mind, if you're going to run the strategy, you need the Chase Sapphire Preferred, Chase Sapphire Reserve, or Chasing Preferred, because of course you need, those are the cards that actually allow you to transfer your points over to Hyatt. If you can't transfer your points to Hyatt, then they're useless in this case, because you can't really book the hotel in any, you know, reasonable price. So if you're trying to do this with as little money as possible, if you are not willing to pay any cash price for the hotel, your best bet is going to be having you and your significant other get Chase Ink cards. And what's really smart is if you have an ink card and then your player two gets an ink card and they use your referral, you earn 40,000 chase points, which is, again, another full night plus some extra at the Park Hyatt or Alila Maldives. And so you can earn a good amount of nights very, very quickly using the strategy. If you do end up applying for a chase ink card, please consider using my affiliate link. It helps out a ton. If you're in the Discord, you'll see it in the referrals channel. If you're watching the recording, you'll see it in the video description. Helps me out immensely. Now, the only other thing I wanna plug is, if you're not part of the Discord yet, if you're watching the recording, join the Travel Lane Discord group down below. Very, very smart group of award travelers. Some really smart people in there. We just booked some you know, amazing cheap hotels that people dropped alerts for. Uh, you'll learn a lot in there. And the only other thing is, if you wanna get more long form content, you know, more uh, like hour long content to really go more in depth on this type of stuff, Consider the credit card BS, watching the credit card BS podcast also in the description. It's a friend of mine uh, who goes to Stanford and I go to UC Berkeley. That's why it's called BS. And we talk about some very advanced topics in there and I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, enough of me plugging my stuff. So the second strategy is the cash strategy. This is for someone that is willing to pay cash, but you know, wants to not have to pay a thousand to $2,000 a night because that's that's ridiculous. Even if you have a lot of money, that's, that's gonna sting pretty bad. Just buy the points on sale. I've talked about this plenty of times before but I need to reiterate it again because it is something that so many people don't understand and they need to do. So you can buy Hyatt points uh, pretty, you know, reasonably at 1.8 cents a point. You can actually buy them less a lot of the time, but a lot, you know, even if you're not wanting to wait for the very, very best sale, you can buy them at 1.8 cents a point, meaning for the Park Hyatt or Lila Maldives, you'd be paying $540 a night, basically 50% off. Hilton, you can buy at half a cent a piece. So after fifth night free, that's going to be $480 a night, less than half off. So these are, you know, amazing ways to stay at these top tier resorts for significantly less cost because, you know, if you're paying the cash price, there's going to be taxes and other expenses and it's, it's very, very expensive. Buying the points, amazing value. 
The only thing to note is that once you buy the points, you can't get your money back for the points, if that makes sense. So you can, you know, book a stay using the points, cancel that stay, get the points back. But once you've converted your real dollars into, you know, Hilton points or whatever, or Hyatt points, you're stuck with those. So keep that in mind. So yeah, and the, the, the 480 figure again is with the fifth night free. It would be 600 a night if you're not staying in increments of five nights. So we've talked about how to book the hotels and you know what hotels I'd recommend. Let's talk more about the flights here. So there are going to be fewer options. There is in virtually unlimited abundance of, you know, hotel options in the Maldives. Flights, of course, you know, if you really want to take some crazy itineraries, you would have infinite options, but we're going to have a few practical ones. So mainly you're going to be looking to go via Doha, Dubai, or Singapore. So personally, on my way inbound to the Maldives, I went via Singapore. On my way out, I went via Doha and went into Dubai. And you can see a picture of me here uh, with the Burj Khalifa. I had a great time in Dubai. I, I recommend it. It's a great place. But so yeah, these three airports are really going to be your main routings in and out of the Maldives. So I think in terms of places you'd actually like want to visit independently as their own stopover, probably Dubai or Singapore would be my pick. Now, Doha, of course, though, has Qatar Airways going through it, so it will have to depend there. Now, to get to the Maldives from the United States, you're looking at a minimum of 20 hours of flight time. Of course, you're doing a, a layover or an exec, uh, you know, a stopover or anything like that, but you're looking at a minimum of 20 hours from the United States. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty insane, you know, flight time for most people. So this is why I recommend doing a stopover. So if you if you do a stopover, you're really getting, you know, kind of two trips, not for the price of one, I would say, but you know, you're getting close there because a lot of times you can add, you know, multi-city tickets with stopovers for not that much more expensive than doing a, you know, just a layover and getting there. Because if you're going all the way to the Maldives, if you're going 20 hours, basically to one of the most remote, you know, places relative to the United States on earth, I recommend visiting a couple places nearby, whether that's Dubai, whether that's Singapore, India, you know, anywhere like that. I recommend going somewhere else. You're already over there. And assuming you can take the vacation time and stuff, it, it, it's a, it's a you know thing I'd recommend. So I did my Maldives trip as part of an around the world trip. So I went to Hong Kong first, then Singapore, then the Maldives, and then Dubai, and then home. So that's what I recommend doing. Dubai, Doha, Singapore, your main routing options. Now, if you're gonna be booking your flight on cash, what is my recommendation? Honestly, whatever's just cheapest, because there's not too much you can do to optimize this. Like, of course you can, you know, there's advanced tricks, like if you know what a fuel dump is and and, and things like that, you can do some more advanced tricks to reduce your cash, cash cost. My main advice would be, if you're paying cash, just book whatever routing you want to do, bet, you know, whatever airline you want to do and try to find the cheapest option. There's not a whole lot you can really do to optimize it. And if you're paying cash, I'm assuming you're flying economy, unless you're a real baller. And if you are a real baller, then the next segment here will also be used, uh, used to you. So a lot of you already recognize what this picture is, if you don't. So this is a uh, Qatar Q Suites, of course. This is going to be our, in my opinion, best points option to getting to the Maldives. Why Q Suites? Well. One, Qatar Q Suites is widely known and agreed upon to having the best business class product on the planet. They have, you know, dine on demand. They have full shutting door suites. If you're in the middle suites, you can lower the divider and make a double bed with your significant other. If you're traveling solo, you can take one of the window seats and, you know, fully close the door and relax and, you know, no one's going to bother you there. So I, I recommend flying Q Suites if you, you know, can make it happen into the Maldives. Now, if you want to book this, the ca the points price is 85,000 avios one way. Now notice I said avios, not British Airways avios, not Qatar avios, because at this point they're all the same. You can freely transfer between, let's say your British Airways account and your avios account back and forth freely. There's no restrictions on that. So it's going to be 85,000 avios per person per way flying from the United States via Doha to the Maldives. Plus, of course, a few hundred dollars in taxes and fees. It depends on the route, depends on you know what the time you're booking it. Now, to get these points, you can transfer from American Express Membership Rewards, Chase Ultimate Rewards, Capital One Points, or City Points. My personal two recommendations, it, assuming you have a bit in each currency, would be to use American Express Points or Capital One Points. And the reason for that is Ultimate Rewards, we want to save for Hyatt redemptions. You know, for example, like using it at the Park Hyatt in the Maldives. And I recommend saving that for Hyatt. City has other options as well that are that are unique. For American Express and Capital One, I think it you know they're easier to earn, especially on American Express side. It's very very easy to earn, so I feel more comfortable burning those toward Avios. And also keep in mind they do have transfer bonuses sometimes where you can 
you know, maybe spend, send out 100,000 points, but get 130,000 points into your British Airways account. And so, you know, that helps reduce your cost even more. So that would be the main way I would recommend to use points to book Q suites to the Maldives. Now, avail the only thing is availability on this is tricky. It's not something that's reliably easy to book. So there are some business class products in the world, some routings that if you're booking close in, if you're booking far out, you can find reliable availability. I would not say necessarily Q Suites is reliable availability. Now I was able to find, find it not looking a year out. I was looking like, I want to say eight months out, nine months out, and I was able to find decent availability, but it's not always the case. You're going to have to be pretty diligent. Now, as a tool I would recommend personally is seats.arrow. So there'll also be a link in the description of this. And there's also a link on the discord server. And this is a phenomenal tool in my opinion, because it allows you to search for all like close and availability on Q suites. And it will tell you to make sure the flight is Q suites. It's very, very easy to search and it will help you be able to find this, you know, without having to just go around on the Qatar Airways website constantly and parsing, you know, oh, is this date available? No, is this date available? And it will be exhausting. But so yeah, QSuite is definitely the best way to fly points, in my opinion. Uh, of course, you could also fly Singapore Airlines or Emirates. The problem with those two is the redemption rates are pretty poor. So Emirates has got very, very poor redemption rates, in my view. You know, there's, there's a few sweet spots on there. But if you're flying like all the way from the US to, to Malé from or by using Emirates, that's going to be a very expensive ticket. Like seriously. Same thing with Singapore Airlines. Now, I did fly Singapore Airlines business class from Singapore to the Maldives. And it was still pretty expensive. It was 40, 38,000 points each, which is not cheap for a four to five hour flight. So if you're, if you're originating in the US, I would book via, you know, Qatar Airways because, or for Avios, because it's just very, very reasonable pricing. So, okay. We've talked about the flights. We've talked about the hotels. I've shown you how to optimize both of those hotels more than flights, of course, but there's other costs we're going to incur in the Maldives. It is not known for being a cheap destination. So, most notably here, and this pisses a lot of people off, not gonna lie. And to be honest, this is one of the main burdens for me trying to go back to the Maldives. And this is the main burden for trying to hotel hop, is you have to pay, once you arrive in Malé airport, you must pay a significant sum to go from the airport to the hotel. And it is not cheap. So usually you're either gonna be doing a speedboat or a seaplane. So if your resort is close to the capital of Malé, you'll be taking a speedboat or a yacht or something like that. If you're a bit further, it's a seaplane. If you're really far away, you take both a domestic flight and a speedboat, which is what I did for Six Senses, because it's very remote. This is really usually gonna be about 750 per person round trip. And it does depend on the resort. So for Six Senses, that's what it was. I know like the Waldorf Maldives, I think is charging like over 900 per person just for the boat ride. And it is a very nice boat, like it's a yacht and it's, you know, they serve you champagne and you have a bedroom and stuff, but it's $900 per person round trip. So even if your hotel is free, that's going to sting. And you have to pay this f per resort per person. So let's say I wanted to hotel hop and go from the Park Hyatt to the Alila or, you know, the Park Hyatt to the Conrad. I got to pay these transfer costs each time. So it's a big burden to hop, hotel hop in the Maldives almost to the point where I would argue, unless you have a lot of money burning a hole in your pocket, I wouldn't recommend it. Because let's say you're willing to pay that 750 per person and you have two people in your party. I could just buy $1,500 worth of points. And that would be basically three more nights at the Park Hyatt Maldives or more than three more nights at the Conrad Maldives. So I would recommend just staying more nights at your current hotel, unless you just have some need to go visit more hotels and money burning in your pocket. It probably doesn't make sense to hotel hop, just spend the money on buying more points to stay in your same hotel because I'm sure you're going to be having a good time there. And yeah, this cost is unavoidable. There is no way to get around the cost unless you're doing something stupid like redeeming your points for cash back equivalent, something like that. So there's absolutely no way to get around it. You have to pay it. There's no hacks unless like you're an influencer or something and they pay it for you. And so these are pictures what we did. So we first flew on the right. You can see we're on our domestic flight here. And this was from the Malay airport over to a, uh, a regional domestic airport. So not a seaplane, it, it was a real plane. We didn't land on water. And then we took a speedboat from that airport to the Six Senses Resort. And they, they gave us lemonade and it was it was a really cool speedboat ride, but it's a tiring experience for sure. It's not for someone that, like, if you're, you know, have health issues or something, it, it's a long travel day. Even if you're coming in from somewhere relatively close like Singapore, because Singapore is only like four or five hours away. But you know, after you land, you got to go to the lounge, you got to get on the domestic flight, then you get on your speedboat, it's a long day. 
yeah, no way to avoid this. You just got to eat it. You got to be prepared for it. And yeah, just save some money. So let's talk about food. Food's an interesting one. So food's also, as you might expect, expensive. Here's the strategy. So one, you need to get free breakfast somehow. So the main ways to do this are via elite status. So if you're staying at a Hyatt, get Hyatt Globalist. It will come with full free breakfast. If you're staying at a Marriott, get Marriott Platinum or higher. For Six Senses or I or Intercontinental, get IHG Diamond. Although I think for Six Senses, everyone gets free breakfast, but, but I digress. For Hilton, get Hilton Gold or Diamond. I recommend Diamond. It's so easy to get. Just get the Hilton Aspire card. Like, no brainer in my view. Get Hilton Diamond. It will come for free breakfast. Although, like, I think at the Waldorf now, they're not giving you free breakfast with Hilton Diamond. It might only be at the Conrad, which is which is so stupid. That, 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 that makes me so mad. Like, that, yeah, that's completely stupid. But get some elite status. Then you can get free breakfast. And... The way you do this is you eat a huge, fat, humongous breakfast. You wake up in the morning, you go to the buffet, you get plenty of time there, and you eat and you eat and you eat. And you eat so much that you are so stuffed. And then you can skip lunch because you just load it up on your free breakfast. Then you got to go to dinner and that's going to be a minimum of $120 for two people. And that is me being very, very conservative with that figure. So on the right here, you can see Jessica and I we were, this is our first night, or our first real night in the Maldives, eating at the Japanese restaurant called Zen. Now, we did not order the set menu. We did not order our own dishes. We split a few dishes together on the set menu. So it was less than a portion for like what is intended for just one person. And it was over $120. And it, it's, it's obviously very expensive. And so you are just gonna have to be prepared for that. So $120 per couple for dinner is the theoretical minimum if you are splitting dishes. Now we weren't hungry after, I will say, like it was a decent amount of food. I wasn't like super hungry after or anything, but we were splitting dishes and we didn't order any alcohol and we're vegetarian. So we don't eat expensive. You know, our stuff is not expensive. So 120, if you're a non-alcoholic vegetarian splitting dishes with your girlfriend, that is the cheapest you will get it, okay? If you're ordering alcohol, if you're ordering steak, well over 200. 300 or more. So be prepared for that. That's why we like to skip lunch and focus more on dinner because you're going to have to eat dinner, uh, but you could skip lunch if you have some snacks throughout the day and, and eat a big, huge breakfast. So be prepared for that. And the left on the left image, by the way, that's the breakfast spread at the Six Senses or part of it, at least that's only a very small portion, actually, but you can see they have the chefs standing on this glass over water. It's, it's really awesome. A great, great experience there. So now let's talk about activities. So activities are, you know, another interesting one here, as you might also expect, expensive, very, very expensive. Now, the cool thing is there's a huge variety. There's a lot of activities we can do at any given resort in the Maldives. And because these are all world-class ultra five-star resorts, so you're going to have full water sports facilities. Anything you could ever want to do is going to be here. So just a few examples, jet skiing, snorkeling, jet packing. You'll look at that in a second, etc. And, you know, don't expect them to be cheap though. So you're looking at about 200 to $500 per hour for a motorized water sport. So snorkeling, of course, you know, you can do that for free uh, or you can go on guidance, guided snorkeling activities, which we did once for the nighttime one. And that was over like $200 for both of us just for like an hour and a half of snorkeling. So it was, it was still very, very expensive, but you can snorkel for free. But for anything motorized water sports related, you're looking, you know, about 200 to $500 per hour. Now that may be for two people, depending on the type of thing you do, like jet skiing, right? You can get two people on the jet ski, but very, very, very expensive. And it will eat into your budget a lot. Now I'm, I'm not going to say like to not do it for free options too. So you can see on the right here, that's me jet skiing. That was like 280 bucks. And I was only on the jet. I was only like, sorry, jet packing for like 25 minutes in the air. So extremely expensive. There's free options. There's free things you can do like snorkeling, you know, just relaxing on the beach. That's like, you know, a favorite on ever, for everyone. Uh, this is a picture in the middle there from the management cocktail reception. So a lot of these resorts in the Maldives, either for all guests or for people with elite status, they'll have these like kind of like semi parties where they'll have free drinks and free snacks and you can go socialize with the guests. I think that's a really fun activity. I recommend that. Very interesting people at these resorts and it's always fun to chat with them. But for these activities, it's going to be very expensive. You're going to be paying a lot of money. I would say just save up, to be honest, and, and bring some money because you're already around the world. You're, you know, traveled 20 plus hours to get there. Don't say, oh, I'm not going to go jet skiing because it's a bit too expensive. Like, obviously, there's a limit for sure, but at least try to save up enough to do one or two activities each because they're really fun. 
I, I will forever remember jetpacking in the Maldives for the rest of my life. That is, you know, a memory that will stay with me forever. So I think it was worth the money, but it's, it's always, you know, going to be expensive. So in summary, Maldives is my favorite place in the world. Okay, I cannot recommend it enough. Some people say it's overrated. I say that's complete BS. I absolutely loved it. I want to go back so bad. If I had more money, I would already be back there. I'm already trying to plan my next trip there. I want to go back in, you know, around next November or something. Uh, amazing place. Now, you can go, for, as we've shown, you can go for much cheaper by using points. If you go using points, you can save several thousand dollars on your hotel and several thousand dollars on your flights. That's the way to do it because it's so easy to book. It's so easy to book these hotels on points just buying the points. There's almost no reason to be paying full cash price at these places. Unless you're going somewhere that doesn't have a points program like Sone Vajani, like a Four Seasons or something, there's no reason to be paying full price. There, I, I, you can't justify it really. But of course, it's still going to be expensive. Regardless, even if your hotel and flight were 100% free and covered, you still have you know about $1,500 in transfer costs, you still have food costs, you still have activities. You're going to be spending probably four to five thousand dollars even if your hotels and flights are free so you need to save up money you need to make sure that you have a comfortable budget to go here but again i think it's the most amazing destination i've ever seen and also just it is for people that want to relax so keep that in mind if you're someone that wants to go out all day and do all these like activities and explore different you know like the local islands and stuff it's probably not for you you're paying so much money to be at these hotels if you want to go explore the local islands, stay on the local islands. Don't stay in these hotels that cost $1,000 a night because, you know, like if you're going to be paying that much money, you better be staying at the hotel. You can get much cheaper accommodations if you stayed on local islands for sure, but you're not going to be getting the same resort experience. So mainly this is a place for people that want to relax, that are fine not doing anything for a couple days. You just want to go lay in the sun, experience some really beautiful weather, jump in some of the warmest, bluest, clearest water you've ever seen in your entire life. That is who the Maldives is for. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I appreciate you all coming. And yeah, I really, really hope this has been a useful presentation to you.